This is my 1982 Toyota Starlet. It's got a 4 AGE, nice length fuel injection. Other than that, it's relatively standard. I got it all ready for the South Island, rebuilt the motor, got rewires to rewire it, lost from tricky tunes, dynoed it, and I thought I was all ready to go. So we're on our way back. We're uh, 93 kilo 83 kilometers from home. Going home to get the spare car because if you could listen, the um, triathlon's not exactly sounding wonderful. We think it's an input shaft, we're not sure, but I don't have a spare gearbox, so Starlet's going home, going to bed. After the South Island, I got home, quickly pulled the gearbox out, and took it off to Shane from Gumbert Rally Automotive. So we've got it to Shane, he's about to pop it to see what the gearbox stand looks like. The unfortunate bit here is I've got no idea what I'm doing. It looks fine from a... From a... Oh, it's mint then! <laughs> Your gears are fine. Put the gearbox back from Shane. He stripped it, looked at it, put it all back together. Couldn't find a fault. So I'm going to pop it back in the car and hope that that miraculously has fixed my problem. Let's go. I couldn't for the life of me get my gearbox to mate up. It would go all of about 10 mils to go and I just couldn't get there. Everyone said I had to wiggle it right, but I couldn't figure it out. So I called in enforcements. Logan came around and gave me a hand. What do you reckon, mate? I reckon. I reckon it's lined up perfectly. I reckon. She's gonna twist a bit like that. Yeah. It's a bit there. That looks real good on this side, right there. I'm gonna push in. We can try. You know how I normally do these? How? Underneath the gearbox, actually laying in my chest. Yeah. <laughs> That's how I've done most of them. Put your hands? Yep. Did it. There it is. You just did it, Logan. <laughs> like I say, I normally get under them. Yeah. And they go. And where's the power ratchet? One? This one. That one. Use that one to find the other one. Oh, yeah. Now's the fun bolt. So there's these three here. One of them's starter motor. Give me the smaller one. So that'll be the easiest one to do. And that one just goes down, obviously, into the starter motor hole. And the next one, there's one there and then one on the other side. And then a bit of a pain. Alan reckons we can reach the far one from this side, so that's today's method. We're just fucking spinning yards while we're doing what we're doing. Yeah, having a good time. You know what? I reckon that bastard's right. You beauty, Alan.
So we've done gearbox bolts, starter motor, gearbox mount, exhaust flange, drive shaft in and bolted to the diff, clutch and speedo connected, time to fill her up with some oil. First drive with the gearbox back in, now that it charges the batteries, <laughs> let's go. Still need a wing mirror, right? It's, um, it's amazing how bad it is driving without one when you're used to having one. I quite literally look for the wing mirror, see nothing, and then just go, because my brain doesn't register that there is a one. One positive here is I'm quite good at changing tips on a starlet. I've done it many, many times, and it's actually a really easy task. So after we went for a quick cruise with it like that, because it wasn't that bad, we got home and Paul and I started pulling it out. Head bolts.
One diff head extracted on the back of it. There we go. So you can see in those gears, they are all immaculate. So nothing's wrong with the diff head in itself. There was only around 200 mils of oil left in the diff housing. It had leaked out inside one of the wheels. This is probably the reason why it's worn the bearings. So I grabbed the head out of my spare diff housing. Hoping this one's all good. I'll quickly inspect that and then we'll pop that one in. Here's a tip, make sure you put the diff in the right way. It'll almost bolt it upside down. I had it almost sealed up, ready to go. Rookie. All back together, time for a quick test drive. She runs mint, winning. Just in time to head up to Lake Hop.